Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. After all the somber and solemn observances and events of this past Holy Week, it is all right to have a little bit of fun on the resurrection morning. And notice, I did not say joy. You should have joy. You should have at least a little bit of it today. Easter triumph, Easter joy, this alone can sin destroy, as we sing very piously. But this whole time has actually been joyful. It's been pure joy for me. But uh, I didn't say happy, but it is joyful. It, from the somberness of Ash Wednesday, all the way through what happens on Good Friday, this is joyful. That's a restrained and reflective kind of joy. And it is soon to be replaced by a more exuberant and celebratory joy. But as I said, we can have a little bit of fun. The white and the gold of Easter have replaced the violet and the black. The Gloria and the Alleluias have returned. There are Easter outfits. There's Easter breakfast and Easter lilies too. I kicked over about three of them last night in your own church. I'm trying to play. But most importantly, death is swallowed up by resurrection. And in the midst of all of the Easter joy, it's all right to have, as I said, a little bit of fun. And not just the colored egg and the bunny variety. Although the bunny was here today. So it was pretty cool. Malachi missed it. He was occupied. But uh, the fun in our gospel today begins when Mary... And the other Mary, whoever that is, come to the tomb to set about the somewhat morbid task of anointing Jesus' body after his burial. You know that they're in for a big and rather life-altering surprise because when they get there, there is an earthquake off the seismograph. And they see this angel of blinding, glorious appearance descend from heaven and roll back the stone very effortlessly. And then he sits on it. And the guards are scared out of their minds. They fall down, they're paralyzed with fear. And all this time, this messenger from the Lord of heavenly armies, he's sitting on the stone, twiddling his angel thumbs. Now the angel might be amused, but Mary and Mary are not amused. And the guards are certainly not amused. They did not think it was any joke what they saw today or the earthquake. And then, if their hearts could not sink any further, then they look in and they realize that the body is gone. Not very funny. And the angel does not exactly put them at ease about this, but he does tell them something extraordinary. He says... He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. And not wishing to linger anymore in the presence of the angel sitting on the rock, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary lift up their skirts, and they flee. St. Matthew tells us with fear, and with great joy to pass the message along to the disciples. You have heard this story so many times that you might have missed it, like the humor it might have gone over your head. But there are two things worth noting in the gospel today. The first is the angel sitting on the stone. Now, you might not think that's a very reverent posture for an angel, and that is correct, because it is not. Because the angel has no reverence for death. He does not feel intimidation or fear or even sorrow at its prospect. That is important for today. Because the large stone on which he sits, just like the grim reality that is signified by that stone, is ultimately not a big deal anymore. The stone is not a permanent fixture. And so the angel sits there like it's no big deal. But I wonder if you've noticed the other thing that maybe you've overlooked before. And that is that Jesus does not come out of the tomb. He does not make a grand entrance out of the tomb. Like you see in a lot of Christian artwork 
when Jesus is bursting through the entrance and his body is perfectly toned, has a very solemn and serious look on his face, and his triumphant banner is unfurled. But that does not happen today. Jesus does rise from the dead, but he does not leave the tomb in that way. Nobody noticed Jesus walk out of the grave that we know of. Not even the guards noticed. They don't notice anything until he rolled the angel comes and rolls away the stone. That means that at some point, and I tend to think it's probably Saturday night when the church holds the vigil, Jesus slipped right through the rock, the way that he does through locked doors and hostile crowds, and then he steals off by himself. He sneaks out and he lets the women have a harried look inside without them really even knowing where he's gone. So it's these two things together the irreverent angel and the surreptitious risen Lord that tell you something vitally important. Death, contrary to popular opinion, contrary to our constant conditioning, and contrary to our inborn fear, is ultimately no big deal. This is what Easter tells us. Now, having said that, I suspect that uh, you are a little surprised if you haven't noticed before that Jesus, as I said, isn't, does not leave the tomb that we see. And I think Jesus is delighted by this. It makes you at least a little bit surprised, just like the women. And it does surprise us, even in our Christian life, that death is no big deal. But those two things together, irreverent angel, and sneaking Jesus. Tell us this important thing about death. So then the, the women go and they look in the tomb. And the angel says, no, he's not here. He actually is gone. He's going ahead of you to Galilee. Why don't you go and tell the guys that they're supposed to go and find him? I think it's kind of fun. And this is the guy who they last saw pathetically expiring who they saw tortured to death. His rigor mortis had set in by the time they took his body down from the cross and laid his corpse in the grave. He's alive, but he's hiding somewhere. Why don't you go and find him? Well, as Mary and the other Mary are going back to the disciples, Jesus just cannot help himself. He cannot keep up this charade anymore. And so Jesus pops out while the women are on their way to do what the angel had said. Surprise! The same guy who was tortured to death, who bled out and died and suffocated last Friday, among whose final words were, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The same dude who has literally gone to hell and back pops up without any introduction. And his first words are, greetings, hi. And after all that Jesus has been through, agony and temptation and sorrow and torture and death, now he plays it off like a joke. And he indulges in a little bit of good nature teasing and a game of hide and seek. Why? It's because after being scared silly by the specter of death, after feeling tortured in your conscience by the weight of sin, after being on the verge of losing hope entirely, you have finally gotten to the resolution. And that is, is that the death and the trials of Jesus are not a tragedy, but they are a divine comedy. It is not a sad and bitter end for the crucified Son of God. The grand reveal, the holy punchline, is that death is not forever. That all of your sorrows will be drowned out in eternal laughter. Your sin gets wiped away like a bug off a windshield. And the devil, well, in the words of C.S. Lewis, 
Christianity commits every Christian to believing that the devil is, in the long run, an ass. It turns out that the joke is actually on the devil. That old Satan thought that he finally had Jesus on Good Friday. And the next thing that he knows, the doors of hell are coming down. And the fires go out with an unceremonious hiss. And the devil scurries like a roach under a rock. And in comes marching Jesus, preaching his triumph to all of those sour and dour spirits in prison. Jesus' life, our life with him is just this. It is a divine comedy. It is a grand true story in which every loose end is going to be tied up. And the dark and the scary stuff, the sad stuff, will not linger in your mind because the end is just so good and so satisfying. And the risen Jesus, so eager to share this marvel, throws a scare into Mary and Mary. It's like when a dad spooks his children, then he gives them a reassuring pat after he scared them to death. He says, oh, don't be afraid. It's okay. Beaming with the joy and the power of his resurrection, Jesus says the same to us. And so you should look back on all of your struggles, all the crap that weighs you down. You should look back on your fallen existence in this world, and you should laugh. And you should laugh with sweet relief that it really is all basically gone and over. That your sin is forgiven. That there's only a couple of goofy ghosts that try to linger, but they always flee in the presence of Jesus. And anything that dissatisfies you or still weighs you down is all going to be taken care of in God's own good time. In the meanwhile, have a little bit of Easter triumph and Easter joy and lighten up because you are in on the joke with Jesus. Have a little fun because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen.